In this video, I'm going to do uh, go through the process of somatic tracking. So I'll explain the basics of it. I'll take you through a little routine and see if you can get good at noticing how you feel. It's a great technique. If you're interested in them, watch the video. Hi, my name is Drew Coverdale. I'm a physiotherapist in the northeast of England and help people with their experience with persistent pain and do what we can to reverse it. If you're interested in this video or others like it, then click on the subscribe button. And if you've got any comments or questions, if you pop them below, I'll do my best to answer them. This is called somatic tracking. Somatic is what we feel and tracking is noticing it. So in essence, you're just noticing what you feel. Because what's happening with pain is but persistent pain is that someone is picking up on a sensation and they're thinking that sensation is dangerous. It's underpinned by a belief that there's damage and they might have proof of that of different things. Uh, opinions and physios and doctors and scans and x-rays. So it's quite a grounded belief. Or they might have had lots of negative uh, results, not found anything. So there's uncertainty. But the basis of the interpretation of the feeling is that it's a stressful one, right? They've just not got certainty about it. They haven't got the information to stop it and it's sort of classed as unpleasant and there's not in control. Those three elements are the stress response. So each time they interpret it like that, they trigger the stress response. And these people tell you they're not stressed or kind of cover it up or enjoy the stress response or have done for a lot of a lot of big parts of the life and it's brought them success so don't differentiate the feelings if you like not really able to work it out so this is a process of getting them to notice those sensations and respond in a different way to to how they are currently emotionally reacting not intellectually the intellectual information kind of confuses the unconscious mind but really that's the thing that drives the pain so yes you can intellectually kind of think differently we've got to feel different and interpret that feeling differently so let's 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 do this the caveat for this is that um, that uh, your pain is persistent and it's been checked out by a medical practitioner and it's a, this, this is a disclaimer, <laughs> get it checked out that it's nothing serious or sinister or anything that it's categorised as persistent pain or chronic pain. This process then is an option. When you're thinking about this, in realistic terms, it's, it's only helpful or it's more helpful when it's low to medium in terms of intensity um, and I've been doing some work with Alan Gordon who wrote the way out book and this is essentially as far as I understand is his technique and he did a study uh, with um, uh, patients who had a long history of low back pain and they only used this technique to um, help patients in that study and that's it's uh, the boulder back pain study if you're interested I can click a I'll leave a link for it. Um, but through that process, uh, and using it over several years, he describes it as helpful for when it's low to medium as an ex as an exercise. And there's other different things you can do that I can post um, another video on. So it's low to medium. So what you're doing is you're going to um, almost set the framework for, for a moment where you could be calm and uh, give yourself the time to go through this process. You are noticing the sensations in your body. You know, you're know, noticing the feelings, but you're doing it where you're not judging them as good or bad. You're doing it where you are simply noticing the feelings and you're going to describe the quality of them. So it could be burning or tingling or numbness or an ache or a sharpness or dull. Now these descriptions, they're neither, never objectively good or bad. They're just sensations. Because we need all those sensations 
to live life and check uh, check those sensations out and once you check them out and feed back to our primitive brain that it's a, it's okay to have that sensation in this situation then the sensation fades and it no longer concerns us which is why we can perform in sport and presentations i can talk on here with feeling that sense of uh, anxiety of talking in public but i know it's okay i don't care if anyone laughs someone might get some benefit from it and i'll have to so we can process the emotions and get through those situations so it's about noticing the sensations you feel as you expose yourself to to them so let's have a go if you sit comfortably and notice the sensations you have as you sit now so you're doing almost an internal scan not like a hawk not checking everything it's like watching clouds it's a soft focus on how you feel now if there's a sensation you might describe as painful just describe the quality of it is it deep is it sharp is it dull is it burning as if you were watching fireworks with your children uh, the riverside we have a show every year that um, we go and watch these amazing fireworks and you don't react to every bang and whistle and pop and crack and sparkle but you gaze in amazement and take it all in so you're doing the same thing with the sensations that you were interpreting and you're just watching them and following them and it might move it might increase it might decrease but just for a moment observe it and think of the words that come with those feelings it's really important that you don't have to overthink this you're just noticing curiously knowing that you are safe now because you are safe now you're sat or you're lying you've set a boundary to just set aside this time for yourself and just notice those sensations because essentially they are just danger signals that your brain is bringing up to your attention and it wants you to let it know is it dangerous or is it safe and it's sensation that belief that there's a structural element behind this can scupper this process completely because you almost have to accept that categorically that isn't the source of the structural that isn't the source of persistent pain it really isn't you can have structural elements but other people have those and I don't have pain so the possibility is there for you notice those sensations notice where they are in your body and notice what they're doing now notice your breath for a moment your hands are on your tummy you feel the air passing and out gently just notice that safe sensation there maybe pick another part of your body that you absolutely know is safe focus on that for a moment notice how that feels there could be pressure there there could be heat there there'd be awareness of touch all around your body and they're just sensations going up to your brain that are safe and the area of your body which you might have interpreted as unsafe it's actually the same kind of sensations if you see them as just a sign of safety that you may be misinterpreted and feed that into the system that you are safe now the sensation starts to change now the skill isn't in it going up or down or being successful at this or being determined at it or being really good at it because they're the traits that often drive that perfectionist uh, feeling that is the stress response so you're just watching quietly I may have talked for two or three minutes or longer it doesn't need to take that long you're just checking in on yourself 
noting the, noticing the sensations, noticing other safe sensations in your body. And then coming back with that soft, safe focus, noticing what happens and being okay with it. That's the exercise. I'll do some other videos, maybe on other places to start and how you can maybe raise the awareness of potential threats. Because um, doing it in the moment when you are safe is perfect, but there'll be times when uh, the strength of the sensation or the cues it maybe come as a bit of a shock. And I'll explain how you can do other things to help in those situations too. It's such a lovely technique with patients. It's such a lovely technique to do on yourself. There's other guided videos on uh, Curable if you're interested in finding more about that. Um, it's an app. There's the Tell Me About Your Pain podcast that has Alan Gordon and some colleagues talking and there's examples there. And there's another physio called Jim, Pr Jim Prusak on YouTube who also has some examples. So there's lots of different resources that you can kind of firm up this information and you can do it with patients, you can do it yourself. It's having that gentle, soft focus so that you start to reinforce messages of safety to that primitive part of your brain where pain lives. And maybe one day it won't live there so much and so persistently.